just want you, Jesus. We just want you in every area of our lives and in everything we say and everything we do. We just want you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We just we just thank you for this this time that we have together tonight. We thank you for these these moments we get to experience your presence together in this community. And um, I just pray, God, that you would keep coming tonight. That you would keep speaking to us as as we transition. As um, we would just stay open to hearing what you have to say to us. We would stay in tune to you, Holy Spirit, and what you're saying, what you're doing in the room, what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Woo! That was good. <laughs> Fancy. You can be seated if you're not already. Um, we're going to transition here in a minute. If you did not get a handout that looks like this, or if you need a pen, you can raise your hand, and one of our ushers, Mr. Felipe Arruda, will come bring it to you. Anyone need a paper? Paper or a pen? Raise your hand. He's coming. We have a wonderful speaker tonight. Mr. Andres Perez. Woo! Welcome him as he comes and gets ready to share with us. Woo! I can't think of a better person to share on the spirit of sonship. <laughs> Woo! It's going to be good. Stretch your hand to him. We're just going to pray real quick. Father, we, we love you. We thank you for this message you have through Andres tonight. God, I pray that you would just anoint him to share. You would just, um, just wow, refresh him as he shares tonight, as he gives, that you would give to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sarah. How's everybody doing tonight? Woo, worship was amazing. Wow, thank you, Corey. We were actually weren't supposed to have live worship tonight, so that was a blessing. Woo. Sorry, it was, it was good. Um, I want to first just, I want to pray. <laughs> Father, we are hungry for you tonight. We are hungry for you tonight. We ask that you come, that you come in a mighty way, Jesus, that you come and you feed us, Lord. I thank you for the breakthrough that you're going to pour out. I thank you for the miracles that you will do tonight, Jesus. We just want you, God. We just want you, and we just welcome you into this place. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank Pastor. <laughs> He's not here tonight, um, but I just want to thank him for this opportunity. Um, this is truly amazing. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I want to get a count of hands. Who, how many of you have not heard this teaching about spirit of sonship? Okay. So I just felt like, like God is going to do some amazing things, and I really want you to lean into it. I really want you to listen to the words. I want you to listen to the spirit. If you don't hear anything I say, but you get a whole message from the Holy Spirit, we won. <laughs> so listen, listen to what God is saying. So to start off, I'm just going to read a few sentences. And I, this is kind of the filter of this teaching tonight. So just uh, listen to it if you want to close your eyes, however. Um, but tonight we want to know that we are sons and daughters, not orphans. A revelation of the Father will change everything in our lives. If we allow the revelation of the Father to touch every area of our lives, He will deal with our fears. He will deal with our insecurities. He will deal with our pain. Because once we receive the spirit of sonship, then we will have an assurance that He will not leave us. God is a Father by nature. He is love by nature. We have become His sons and His daughters. So tonight, through, throughout life, we, we've picked up things. Um, to kind of start off, spirit of sonship, orphan spirit, this isn't a demon. It's not anything you can really catch. But there are things, tendencies, that we pick up along the way. Um, and tonight, I believe God is going to show us what those are. Um, and when he shows us things, we have power over it. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now, when he was speaking that, he was speaking directly to his disciples. So we've read it. 
where it said that they were with their, their father, mending their nets. So we know that they had natural parents. I told them, I will not leave you as orphans, more so to speak on our spiritual condition, that we have been separated from the Father. In John 5, 19, it says, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Now, this, this scripture, Jesus is talking to people that were accusing him of doing a miracle on the Sabbath. And yet and still, he said to them, I am the Son. I do what the Father says. I do what he does. And these people could have murdered him right then and there. And, and as I read that scripture, I just keep feeling God is, is showing us that Jesus had confidence in his identity. Jesus had confidence in who the Father said that he was. And I really want to encourage you tonight because I feel like there's, there's things God has spoken already many years ago. Um, there's things that maybe God will speak to you tonight. And I feel like as we go through this process, will you have confidence in what God has told you? Maybe you're supposed to be a healing, preaching, Holy Ghost machine, and God has said that to you. And you have to have confidence that when someone comes up to you and they have a headache, that it'll go away. <laughs> that God will use you because he has already spoken that to you. Wow. In Isaiah 14, 12, 16, this is kind of where we start. This is the root of spiritual orphans. And it says, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will make myself like the most high. That's Satan. Ezekiel 28, 12, 19. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. So Satan was the first spiritual orphan. He, he was right there next to the Father, probably the most beautiful creation that God made. And he allowed pride. He allowed his ego. He allowed these things to say, I want to be on my own, and that caused him to be a spiritual orphan. And so the, it's a heart and soul condition that needs healing and walking out. Once again, it's a heart and soul condition that needs healing and walking out. These are tendencies that we have picked up. I am one of them. I have many of them. And these are things that we can't just say, okay, I got prayer, it's, it's over. It could happen. It, it has happened. But a lot of times, we have to get our heart healed. We have to truly go to those situations where we maybe act out of fear, act out of pride, act out of our own strength to make the situation come to life. You know, the, the way that I, I was seeing it was we, we hear what God said, but then we see what we see in the natural so we try to make it work out so that it happens. When God is like, no, you're not supposed to strive. That's orphan tendency. You're not supposed to go and toil and do this. I will provide. I will be the one who makes this come to pass. So Adam and Eve, when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they walked out of the garden into fear, striving, pain, and emptiness. And this is, is where we get it from. This is what we've walked into because we've been born on this earth. Fear, striving, pain, and emptiness. And so now we fight for everything. We do our, everything ourselves. We get what we can get when we can get it. Now, Let's go to Genesis 21, 9 through 21. This is the story of Ishmael and Isaac. So this kind of shows us Ishmael, he is the representation of an orphan, and Isaac is the representation of a son. And it says, Drive out this maid and her son, for the son of this maid shall not be an heir with my son Isaac. So if you know the story, um, Abraham was promised descendants. And he was getting older. Sarah was getting older. And they said, doesn't look right in the natural. Let's make it work. So Sarah gave Abraham Hagar. And 
there came Ishmael. Um, they said it was about 14 years or so before Isaac was born. So I can't imagine Ishmael growing up in this home. He has all this tension in the home. And then I think about two years later, Isaac is born. So he's about 16. And that's where the scripture was spoken. Drive out this maid and her son. I don't know about you, but if I was 16 and I was separated from my dad, I would not be happy. And so what this is showing us, the picture that, that we see here is that the spirit of an orphan, Ishmael, they're the lost. While the spirit of sonship, Isaac, are Christians. So they, they don't have a home. They, they are lost. But yet and still, they both had the same father. Okay, so it's telling me that I got to say my testimony. <laughs> so I grew up in an amazing home. I have an amazing mom and dad. I honestly couldn't ask for anything better. But I was an orphan. I grew up trying to fend for myself, trying to make sure that I could take care of myself. Um, at 14, I got a job. I wasn't trying to do that that early, but having means may have attributed to that. Um, and so my whole life, I put up walls. I never allowed the love of my parents to actually penetrate those walls. They didn't do anything, but I put those walls up. And so when life goes wrong, we close our spirit and isolate ourselves. And we go from being joyful into acting withdrawn and somber orphan. We live as if we do not have a loving and affirming home with Father God, a safe place. And this is one of the biggest hindrances in our relationship with Father God. It's not him. He is loving on us. He is Pouring out on us, there's so many things that he has done in my life that I'm just like, God, I did not deserve that. <laughs> just, I remembered um, the, the first mission trip that we went on. I was so excited. I, I was sharing, like, what happened and all the miracles. And then, like, the punchline was, I saw all these healings, and I didn't even read my Bible. <laughs> Like this, this, you know, I guess reading my Bible means people get healed. But no, God's like, I'll heal people anyways. This is how we do it. So, yeah. <laughs> that's what we need. Come on. So I want you to grab a pen, and we're going to go over the spirit of an orphan and the spirit of sonship. Now, I want you to star or circle from either column. So if you see orphan tendencies, you see the spirit of sonship, I want you to circle both. Does everyone have a pen? Okay. So the orphan spirit, they see God as master. Sonship, see God as a loving father. Orphan, independent, and self-reliant. Sonship, interdependent. Orphan, live by the love of law. Sonship, live by the, love of the, the law of love. Orphan, insecure, lacking peace. Son, rest and peace. Orphan, strive for praise, approval, acceptance. Son, accepted in God's love, justified by grace. Orphan, personal achievement to impress God, or no motivation to serve at all. And son, deep gratitude for being loved and accepted by God. Orphan, duty and earning God's favor. Son, pleasure and delight. Orphan must be holy, God's favor, increasing shame and guilt. A son wants to be holy, doesn't want anything to hinder intimacy. Orphan, self-rejection from comparing yourself. Son, positive, affirmed by value to God. 
Orphans seek comfort in counterfeit affections. Son, rest in the Father's presence and love. Orphan competition, rivalry, and jealousy. Son is humility and unity. Orphan, make yourself look good by making others look bad. And son seeks to restore others in love. Orphan, source of pain, distrust, distrustful, no submission, that's view of authority. And a son is respectful, honoring ministers of God. Orphan, difficulty receiving admonition. And a son as a blessing and needs need in your life. Orphan, guarded and conditional. Son, open, patient, and affectionate. Orphan, conditional and distant. Son, close and intimate. Orphan, bondage. Son, liberty. Orphan, feel like a servant and slave. Son, feels like a son and a daughter. Orphan, spiritual ambition, a desire to be seen. Son, to daily experience the Father's love. And orphan, fight for what you can get. Son, sonship releases your inheritance. That last one. (laughs) What? (laughs) Ever since I read that, I'm like, Lord, I have an inheritance. This needs to change because you have it and I don't. It's going to happen. Come on. Jesus, help me. Release that. I'm not an orphan. I'm not going to fight for what I need to get. I'm going to get it from you because you're my father. So come, pour that out. (laughs) So when orphan tendencies arise, this kind of happens, um, you probably already know, when the attitude of the heart overflows at a time when they feel they're not getting the recognition or favor they deserve. So these are the times where we expected something to happen, whether it was a promise, whether it was how someone should have treated us, whether fill in the blank, and that's when the orphan tendencies come out. Pride, seeking after your own, shaming others, all the things that we just read. And so sonship is about security, significance, identity, patience, basic trust, faithfulness, loyalty to the Father and to the family, humility with our own personal agendas, and being others-oriented rather than being self-centered. So where do we fall into that? We're probably in the middle. Um, (laughs) And so we can kind of see why walking in healthy relationships with God and others uh, may have been difficult or with someone that we know um, because as we walk through life, we see these things come out. I hope that so far, maybe God has already shown you some things because again, God wants to bring that breakthrough. So what is God's answer to this? If we look at Genesis 2-7, it says, God formed Adam from the dust. God breathed into Adam and he came in. So he felt the father's touch. He saw the father's eyes. He was looking into the face of love. He heard the Father's voice, and he received affirmation. And this was God's plan. This was his, his whole intention. He literally created a garden for Adam and Eve. It says he made trees that would bear fruit, because he was thinking they might like fruit. They might like to eat something. <laughs> he brought Adam his spouse. He walked with them. There's nothing that they lacked. So the gospel is about the father who lost his kids and would do anything to get them back. In Romans 8, 14 through 15, it says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And I really felt like I needed to share this story. It's part of the curriculum. Um, but it's talking about just a class of junior, junior high school children were discussing families. And they saw a picture of a family. And one boy had, like, brown hair. And I guess everybody else had, like, blonde hair. So they're like, oh, he's adopted. And then there was a girl there. She was like, yeah, I'm, 
I'm adopted. And so the teacher asked, you know, what do you think that means? What is adoption? And she said, it's when you grow in your mom's heart instead of her tummy. And I feel like this is our family. <laughs> this is the family we've been adopted into. And we have an amazing pastor, Pastor Tracy, you know, who are here, who obviously we were not in her tummy, but <laughs> we're in her heart. We're in pastor's heart. And I really feel like that is something that we can't take for granted. In Romans 8, 15, it says, we've been given the spirit of adoption. So it already happened. Galatians 4, 5, we have the full rights of a son. So it's happening. In Romans 8, 23, we wait for our adoption. So it's yet to come. So we're literally sandwiched in past, present, and future adoption. God wants us. <laughs> and so God chose you. In Revival Kids, I remember we were talking about how God is always happy. And the first thing you know, they say is like, well, what if I do something bad? He'll be mad, right? I was like, well, I mean, not really. <laughs> He won't be mad. Um, and the picture that we kind of showed them was that, think about, you know, talking in their terms. Let's say you build this level of Minecraft, right? And you are like, okay, it's going to look like this. I'm going to make sure it has a river, a statue, a mountain, all these things, and I'm excited to do it. You work really hard at it, and you finish it. How do you feel about the end result? They're like, oh, I'll be excited. I'll be so happy that I was able to do that. And um, we're like, hey, that's how God feels about you. You were his plan. You were made in his image. Every little, <laughs> every little detail. So God chose you. In Ephesians, excuse me, 1, five. it says, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons, according to his good will and pleasure. I think it's in John 15, 16. You did not choose me, I chose you. And Deuteronomy 131, the Lord carried you as a father carries a son. So just to go down the list, orphan and son. Orphan, no home, no inheritance, fights for everything, no presence, no name, not belonging to a family. Son knows how to be at home, has an inheritance, gets gifts, and bears the name of his father. So, ministry team, if you could come up. Tonight, we're, we're going to do some ministry time. And a lot of our orphan tendencies, a lot of these things that maybe tripped us up in life. A lot of these things that we blame are the reason for these tendencies. We're going to recognize them. We're going to repent for operating out of an, out of an impure orphan motive and as well forgive all of those who cause them. And right now we have our ministry team they are here to represent your mother and your father. If they didn't treat you right, your mother or your father, if they didn't give you what you thought they should have given you, tonight I ask that you forgive them. And before you go up, if you want to do it right then and there or before you go up, and I want you to hug them. They're standing right here <laughs> in proxy. And I'll tell you, I have seen so many relationships healed out of just forgiving our parents for the things that we thought they should have done, that maybe they had no idea. They just didn't have the knowledge or didn't think it was important. They just didn't know. So get in touch with 
the pain and the loneliness of that moment when you cut yourself off from receiving a parent's love. Look throughout the memory and see if you can, excuse me, if you can see what Jesus was doing or what he is saying to you. Allow him to speak words of comfort, acceptance, and belonging. Choose to be fathered. Choose to be carried. So, Father, right now, we just thank you. brave people that are in this room. There's no check that anyone could write for the pain that they've been caused. There's no no real value that you could pay off to say, oh, that's done. It's over. And I thank you for them as they choose to forgive, as they choose to squash the debt. Right now, Holy Spirit, release vision. Speak to us tonight. And I just encourage you to be brave. Be brave. These things that have been hanging over us, these things that are not easy to just not do anymore, whether it's pride or being self-sufficient, Those are just a few of mine. So I want to invite you to come up and receive the hug of a father. And for some of you, it would be the hug of a mother. Father, we just, I just repent for putting walls up, God, for trying to preserve myself, God, for trying to do this on my own, for not allowing help, for not receiving affirmation, thinking that was the right thing, thinking that was how you should live life. In the outside, it looked like, oh, he's so diligent and He's, he's, he's good. He's trying to manage his life. But in reality, it was just trying to be self-sufficient. It was just trying to take care of my own and not even allowing you in, Father. So right now, heal our hearts. Heal our hearts. Let us put the walls down, Jesus. Let us let the love touch us, God. off anything that says we don't have a loving father anything that says you are a slave driver that you are a master that we have to work for your love right now we break off anything that would make us independent and self-reliant help us Jesus to be interdependent God that in those moments when things are not what they should be not what we feel they should be 
Let us not try to make it right and just allow you to come and do a miracle, Jesus. Lord, we just pray right now that you help us just to live by love, God. The love of the law of love and not the love of law. Remove all insecure, all insecurities, all lack of peace. Because that's not what you have for us. You have rest for us. You have peace for us. We can receive from you. We can feel secure in you, Jesus. Wow, that we've already been approved by you, Lord. You've already been accepted. You already paid the price for us that no one has ever paid for us. And just release a pleasure and a delight as we serve you, God. As we serve you, Jesus. That we're not checking off a box. That we're not just going through the motions, God. That we serve with a purpose right here, Jesus. That we want to be holy, God. That we don't want anything to hinder intimacy with you, Lord. against self-rejection we come we come against the comparison trap jesus because we are each individually made god fearfully and wonderfully made god we are positively affirmed by you you are a comfort father you are our rest god we don't seek comfort in counterfeits we don't seek affections in counterfeits we get it from the source which is you, Jesus, which is you, Father God. We can be humble and we can be united, God. There's no competition. There's no rivalry. There's enough in your kingdom for all of us, Jesus. Right now, Jesus, we build each other up. We restore one another, God. We're not trying to look good or make others look bad, Father God. Right now, Jesus. We see the gold in them, Jesus. We see you in them, Jesus. And we call it out in Jesus' name. Wow, we trust our leaders. We trust the people you've put over us, God. We trust our pastors. We respect them. We honor them. They are ministers appointed by you, Father. We don't have to run around looking for for you because you're right here Jesus right here Jesus and Father I just pray right now I know this is something I've struggled with and it's receiving admonition receiving a simple compliment (laughs) and Father I just pray Lord Jesus that we see ourselves that you see us God that you make beautiful things, that you make amazing things, Jesus. You have given us gifts and talents, Lord, right here, Jesus. And I just pray right now, we come against false humility. We walk into pure humility right now in Jesus' name. Mikey's going to minister on the keyboard a little bit. Um, and Andres and I are just going to continue. No, no, you're good. We're just going to continue to minister here for, for a minute. But um, I just want to encourage you guys, slash challenge you a little bit. Um, your healing is contingent on your participation. Um, you know, just to let you into my life, I had a really good mom and dad. I'm about to go hug one of these guys because there's stuff that I have to continually forgive my parents for. 
And if you allow Holy Spirit to, he's gonna highlight things right now. God, this is what God does in these teachings. He's gonna bring stuff to memory that you need to forgive mom and dad for, that you need to let go. And when he brings that thing to memory, you're gonna come up here and you're gonna forgive mom and dad because that's who these two are. It's mom, that's dad. You're gonna look at them and say, I forgive you. And they're gonna say, I'm sorry, and I love you. And there's gonna be healing in that, but you have to be brave. You have to be brave, and I'm fully expecting before we leave tonight, every single person is going to come up here and hug one of these two because that's what Holy Spirit does in these meetings. But you have to be brave. I've seen it over and over. I've seen it time again. I've, I've heard of it in other countries. This exact teaching, I hear what God does, and I've participated in it myself many times. So right now, I want you, I want you to close your eyes. And if Holy Spirit hasn't already, he's going to do it right now. He's going to bring something to memory that you need to forgive mom for, you need to forgive dad for, something that you need to let go, something that... that still hurts when you think about it. I'll tell you what it is for me. Every single time I think about how my dad wasn't around and always working as a kid, it hurts. It hurts. And I need to forgive him for it over and over again. Over and over again because he had a job to do, but six-year-old Corey just felt like work was more important. And that, that hurts. And I have an amazing, amazing dad. Some of you guys know him. I just want to get vulnerable with you for a second to let you know it doesn't matter how good your parents are we come away with scars and hurts amen so right now we're going to pray Andre's going to pray again when he prays Holy Spirit's going to bring something to mind and you're going to come up here and you're going to say mom or dad I forgive you for that thing amen amen he's going to do it he's going to do it you ready Andre's going to pray again the Holy Spirit's going to come you ready, Andres? He's going to pray again. Holy Spirit's going to come. And when he brings it, you're going to come. And we're going to start lining up, okay? We're going to fill these lines because there's going to be healing in the room tonight. Amen? There's going to be healing in the room tonight. Come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, right now, we just come before you, Jesus, and we forgive, Lord. We, for, we forgive for those things that, that we believe we were owed, Jesus, that we didn't get. Jesus, right now we just release the healing, God. Right now, just shine your light, Lord. Shine your light on what that thing is, God. What that thing is that has brought just, just, we have shortcomings because of it, Lord. Just right now, God, that thing, Lord Jesus, that, that keeps us out of relationships, even that are not with our mother and father, the, those things that affect our relationships with other people, with leaders, with our bosses, with friends in the relationships that we're in, God, right now, Jesus, even with ourselves, Lord, right now, God, let us forgive, Lord. Let us forgive and forgive ourselves in the process. If we did something, Lord, if we did, we caused it, Lord, we put the walls up, God, we were prideful, we were trying to sustain ourselves, God, right now, we repent, Lord. Forgive us, Jesus. Release the healing Holy Spirit. Release the healing Holy Spirit. So that when it rises up again, Lord, we have victory, Jesus. That this is not a reoccurring theme. This is not something that we'll see passed down. It stops right here in Jesus' name. It stops right here. Jesus, that our children, Lord, our children will see the fruit of this, of what you're doing tonight, Jesus. That they will be healed and whole in ways that we wish we had. Right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus, release the miracle, Lord. Release the miracle, Father. Your power. Your power, Jesus. Send your ministering spirits right now. Touch everyone in the room. Touch everyone in this place, Lord. The lies come off in Jesus' name. Those lies, they, those weights come off in Jesus' name. We are not victims, Lord. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. When we come across those situations, we will win, God. We will win, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for the transformation that you're doing in us tonight. We thank you for the transformation that will happen tomorrow and the next day, Jesus. Right now, Lord, right now, Jesus, pour it out. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord. Maybe we don't want to do it. <laughs> Maybe you're asking us to make a phone call right now. Maybe you're, you're, you're telling us to physically go to someone and repent. Make us brave tonight, Jesus. Or make them come to us or call us so we can't run. Right now, Jesus. 
right now, Jesus. However you do it, God, this is more than just for us, God. How will the world see a healed and whole son and daughter? How will they see if they don't see it through us, Father, right now, Jesus? This is not just about us, God. This is about more than that. This is about expanding your kingdom. This is about bringing other sons and daughters into this family, God. This is about bringing the healing to them, Jesus. We can literally bring the healing to them, Father God. Right now, right now, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. really felt like God is going to use us to bring the miracle. I really felt like we are his plan to release the miracle in other people's lives. That we'll see the same hurt in someone else and we'll know that you want to heal them. We know that you want to bring their breakthrough, Jesus. And it'll be so easy. It'll be so easy for them to be free. It'll be so easy because it's how you do it. There's no striving. There's no working it up. It's by your spirit. It's by your grace. Right now, Lord, I ask that you show us the faces of the people. praying I just the Lord showed me that there's someone in here tonight whose father never said I love you um, and I hear the father saying that to you right now I hear him just speaking the words I love you um, and I just feel like I just saw what I saw was um, you coming up here and, and you have to tell one of these guys that hey that, that was me and they're gonna look at you and you say that and they're gonna say I love you and you're gonna receive the love of the father I also feel like there's somebody in here tonight that's like my dad. My mom and dad never did anything bad to me. Um, and you're having like a hard, a real hard time saying, ah, there was nothing like bad. It was like, but I just felt like I just saw the word distant written over you. And there was no intimacy. And, and not bad is not good enough to the father because he doesn't want to be just not a bad dad not bad parents he just he wants intimacy and you've never had intimacy with um with a with a with a parent before um and i just i just right now release intimacy over you if that's you just close your eyes and receive it the love of god we just break it i just see the uh, calluses on hearts right now coming off come on just just press in holy spirit's moving in the room just lean into what he's doing you have to be you have to be brave you, you know yeah th this is what we're here for pulling off pulling off scabs hurt but, it, it hurts, it, hmm? it, it bleeds, it's not fun, but, um, but when he does it, healing comes. When he does it, healing comes, amen. Um, I see, I see um, right now just a, a, a woman in the room who's, whose mother um, was um, controlling and constantly correcting, constantly correcting. You were never good enough, you never did it right. Right now I just break off that need to perform. Right now in Jesus' name we just break off performance. In Jesus' name, we just break off performance right now. And, and I just hear the Lord saying he is proud of you and that you are not a failure, that you have never failed him. I just see it right now. You have never failed him. That need for performance right now, we just break it off of you, daughter, in Jesus' name. The Father is proud of you and he loves you. That lie that the enemy has used through that hurt that you will never measure up, we break that lie that you will never measure up. We break that now in Jesus' name. We break that lie now in Jesus' name, Father. We break that line now in Jesus' name. As I'm shouting these things out, and if it's you, you right now, we're just God's releasing the grace to forgive for those things. That's reason He's releasing the grace to forgive for those things. Also, I see um, someone, maybe more than one, but someone in here who's afraid to have kids because of how your parents were. And like you're scared that, that you're going to be the same way. And I just break that lie in the name of Jesus, the fear that you're going to, you know, turn out like somebody in your life that you feel like you know wasn't the best role model or a mother or father figure who maybe hurt you and you're afraid that you're going to do the same thing I just declare in the name of Jesus that the fear would leave that that they would be brave and coming up here and forgiving their mom forgiving their dad 
for the way that they were raised, for the way that um, whatever had happened to them, God, I pray that they would be able to forgive and they would not be afraid to have children. They would not be afraid of what kind of parent they will be but they know they will be good because they're following you, Jesus. They know that they will be the, the perfect parent for those kids that you have for them to have. In the name of Jesus. And if you're sitting there too, you know, feeling like I'm not sure what to repent of or what to talk to God about, look back at that list of orphan tendencies and spirit of son tendencies and if there were anything that you circled on the orphan side, that's a good place to start. And things to repent of if you're not sure how God is talking to you. If you circled orphan things, you know, God wants to heal that of you in you tonight. He's not here to, to, to call you out, but to heal it. And if you're coming up here, I, I just see like, the people who are being brave, I see the, the, the boldness, you know, like in coming and taking the steps forward and forgiving a mom or a dad, but I see like him just kind of grab your heart and just renew it. Does that make sense? I just felt like there, there's some one in the room that a sibling is is the cause that there's there's just no up, uplifting words from them they were not kind and it truly did hurt you if that's you please come up thank you holy spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, I just feel like the Lord is just waiting on a couple people right now. That He just wants to touch, He just wants to heal. He just wants to heal. want to do something together as, as, as the room, unless you're getting prayer right now, but as the room, I just want you to close your eyes, every single person in the room, every single person in the room, I just want you to close your eyes, I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, Father, I'm open to whatever you want to do. I'm open to whatever you want to do. And you just pray that prayer and we just allow him in.